Kitty in the Candy Case. And um, um, I'm very happy to have you all here today. And um, I hope you have all your equipment ready to help me solve a very, very uh, serious crime. And I would say we're just gonna start diving into it. So remember what you will need. Let me just share it with you again, what you will need. So you will need, oops, sorry. And I'll just, oops, have to go back. And we'll just make this one small. And we're gonna hide the control. And now it doesn't work with the when I'm going back. Let me just go back. Here we go. So this is what you need. Um, you need paper to write on and a pencil or a pen, um, a clean piece of styrofoam. So from, from example, from an old styrofoam cup or a slab of chocolate. Uh, if you have some iodine, you can use some iodine. Um, please, if it's smaller kids, I doubt supervision is advisable. We need some vinegar, some water, a pipette, syringe or straw, small glasses, plastic gloves um, if you're working with the iodine because uh, iodine usually stains, spoon, and then we either need cornstarch or custard powder, we need bicarbonate, sugar, cream of tartar, salt, a plate or saucer or maybe two, paper and or kitchen paper towels just uh, to protect the surface and um, you know it can be a, a little bit messy all right okay so i would say let's just straight dive into it so today around two o'clock a terrible crime happened at the ocean view primary school the secret candy stash in the principal's office disappeared Careful investigation led to believe that currently an unknown suspect working at the school took the candy. So let me introduce our victim. This is Mr. Stretch Cherry, and he's dedicated to teaching. And Mr. Stretch Cherry is the principal of the Ocean View Primary School. With his encouraging words of wisdom and his and the occasionally free candy from him. He is, as you can probably believe, a very popular principal. He usually keeps his candies in the desk drawer, but when he returned from lunch, all the candies were gone. All right, so this is our victim. And now I'm going to introduce you to our suspects. And you probably also have to listen very carefully about you know, what information we have about all the various suspects. Oh, sorry. First of all, of course, I went to the crime scene. Uh, I went to Mr. Stretch Cherry's office today and um, I'll, I'll found some evidence. And I hope that you are able to help me, um, you know, solving using based on this evidence to help me trying to solve this crime. So first of all, what we found was on the crime scene, we found three kinds of fiber. So fiber one and fiber three, we found it on the office chair, so where the principal usually sits in. Fiber two, we found in front of the desk. And then we have evidence two, which is a, was a piece of paper with a secret message left on the desk. So very, very strange. And um, it took me a long time to figure out what it actually means. And I'll show you the secret message just now. And number three, we also found white powder in the drawer where the candy was, was in. Okay, so there was a white powder in the drawer. And evidence for an apple with bite marks left in the bin. Okay, and um, I know that Mr. Mr. Stretch Cherry, he's not into healthy stuff, so he doesn't eat apples. So it must be from somebody who was in his office. Okay, so let me introduce our suspects. And remember what I said, 
you just have to make sure that you listen very carefully about you know what our suspects actually are so we have suspect a miss miserable miss miserable is the grumpy life orientation teacher and does not like children but she likes candy she was seen close to the principal's office around the time of the crime and then we have suspect B, Mrs. Honeybee. The English teacher knows where the key to the principal's office is. So that's very suspicious. So she knows where he hides the key. She loves candy and had time during the lunch break to get into the office. Hmm. So maybe she was like, you know, she wanted to get some, some candy uh, because remember she loves candy. And then we have suspect C, Professor Zweistein. Professor Zweistein is the mathematics teacher at the school. He sometimes uses candy for his mathematics classes. Ah, okay. He was in the principal's office before the candy disappeared. Hmm. So maybe he went into the office to get, you know, candy for his mathematics class. And then we have suspect D, Mrs. Rainy Day. And Mrs. Rainy Day is the extremely strict, and you, you can already see it from her face, history teacher at the school. She is allergic to candy and believes that children should not eat candies because they are unhealthy. Mrs. Rain has access to the principal's office. Hmm. So maybe, I don't know, maybe she took the candy for whatever reasons. And then we have suspect E. Mr. Speedy. As a sport teacher, he genuinely cares about his learners and enlightens them with amazing life lessons. He loves healthy food and believes that candies are bad for the health of children. He was also seen close to the principal's office around lunchtime. So we have five suspects who Pretty sure everybody has got a motive. Remember, a motive is something um, when you, a, a, a kind of a, a reason why they would take the candies. So suspect A, suspect B, suspect C, suspect D, and suspect E. Okay, so your task is it now, based on the evidence collected, who took Mr. Stretch Cherry's candies? So in order to do this, um, we have to make a table or we should make a table. So what you have here is a table with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns. In the first column, you're basically writing down, you're basically writing down evidence one, evidence two, Evidence three, evidence four. Sorry, um, just just uh, out of interest, did everybody see the presentation so far? Are you able to see the presentation? Yes. Okay, super. Did you did you already see also the suspects, or do I have to go back quickly so that you can have a look at the suspects? Go back quickly, please. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back quickly. Let me just go back quickly. Okay. Oops. So remember, this was the crime scene. Did you all see this crime scene? Okay, so this is the crime scene with, ev with evidence one, two, three, and four. These ones are our suspects. So Miss Miserable, Miss Honey, Mrs. Honeybee, Professor Zweistein, Mrs. Rainy Day, and Mr. Speedy. And you've heard what I said about the motives or about, you know, uh, their little history. And then we have our table. Okay, so let me just quickly stop sharing. Oops. Stop sharing. And whoopsie. And okay, I'm gonna switch quickly to my other camera. Let me just gonna put my highlight on it. I'm gonna pin myself and you can pin me as well. All right, and I'm gonna change to my other webcam. All right. Okay, so what you need to do now is you need to make a table, right? Remember, so you're gonna make a column here and you're gonna write 
evidence number one, evidence number two, evidence number three, evidence number four. And then on top, what we have is we have the victim. Okay. We have suspect A, and I'm just writing A, B, C, D, E. And what we're now trying to find is if there is a connection between the evidence and our suspect. Here we go. Right, here we go. So this is how the table is gonna look like. I hope that you also draw, already start drawing your table. So you have evidence one, two, three, four, and then you just write the victim. Why do we think have, we have to include the victim? The reason is because the victim, of course, you find traces from the victim. So some of the evidence might actually be linked to the victims because it, remember it is his office. So we have A, B, C, D, E. These ones are our subjects, uh, sorry, suspects. Okay, so let us go to our first evidence. And the evidence that we collected were fibers. So these ones were the fibers that we found at the crime scene. So this is fiber number one. This is fiber number two. This is fiber number three. And we collected fibers from our different, from the different people. So I've got a fiber from the victim. I've got fiber from suspect A. I've got a fiber from suspect B. I've got a fiber from suspect C. Also some fiber from suspect D. And a fiber from suspect E. So what I've done is I actually already done a little bit of work up front. So I basically um, put the, the, the fiber under the microscope and I'm going to share the photos that I took on the, on the microscope. Let me just share my screen again. Here we go. All right. Okay. So remember this is our table, if there is no connection, so if nothing's matching up, we're going to make a cross or we write no. But if there is a connection, we either make a tick or we write yes. Okay. So based on the connect, uh, evidence collected, who took Mr. Stretch, Sherry's kindly. So, and here we have evidence number, whoopsie, number one. Okay. So here is the fiber. All right. On the left-hand side. You can see fiber one, in the middle fiber two, and then we have fiber three. So now you have to look at these ones here. You have to now look at the fibers and compare them with our victim, suspect A, suspect B, suspect C, suspect D, and suspect E. You're gonna compare them and find out who basically, whose fiber, we found at the crime scene. And if you can then just say that when you're ready. Ready. And ready, super, okay, so number one. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next one, which is our secret message. So this is our secret message. This is what I've got here, our secret message. So this is what we found. And you can see it looks very, very weird. So we've got uh, uh, dashes and dots. And um, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if you can make sense out of it. I, I couldn't first, but then I've checked it out and basically what we went on to is we went on to the internet. I went onto the internet and I found out that so this is in fact something that is called a Morse code. 
Okay, Morse code, and this is where what, what uh, ships used to do or, or military used to do to communicate with one another, Morse code. Okay, so now I just, I'm just going to give you a training lesson on Morse code. And here in this gray block, what you can see, you've got uh, some red, uh, some two red dots with a red dash. And then you have blue dash, blue dot, blue dash, and then you have two green dashes. Um, two green dots, and then you have purple dash and a purple dot. So what you can do now is you can go on to the left hand side and check. So you're looking for, first of all, for two dots, where are two dots? So here we have two dots and a dash, uh, but we still have another dot, so it can't be this one here. Um, so here we have two dashes, no, four dots, no, two dots, but no dash, no, 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 three dots, no, but here we have two dots and a dash. So basically what this uh, represents is the letter U. You can also use this very strange looking tree here at the bottom. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how it's gonna work. So remember, if we have, this is where we start. This is where you keep your eyes on. You're gonna start there. And, um, if you have a dot, you're gonna to go to the left. So let's go to the left. You saw that you follow my red line. So we're gonna to go to the left. And then we're gonna to come to the E, but we still have more, so it can't be the E. So either left or right. So if it's gonna be another dot, we're gonna to go to the left. And we, it is another dot, so we're gonna to go to the left. But now at the I, are we finished? No, because there is still uh, uh, some some symbol coming up, and this time it is a dash. So if it is a dash, we're gonna go to the right, and we also end up with a letter U. Okay. So, oh, first letter soft. Second one is a dead dash, a dot, and a dash. So let's try and use the bottom one. So we start here. So with a dash, we're gonna go to the right. Here we go. And we're going to end up at the T, but there's still more to come. So in this case, we have a dot. So what does it mean? We have to go to the left and we end up with the N, but there's still one more letter to come. So uh, one more step to go. So um, this one here basically is a dash. So we're going to go to the right and we end up with a K. All right. And I'm pretty sure that you already can start guessing. Um, what it is. Okay. Again, we start off with a dash. So we're going to go to the right. We end up at the T. So now again, because there is another dash or dot coming up. So this is a dash. So we're going to go to the right again. Now we have two dots. So that means we're going to go down the dot lane. So to the left, and then we're going to go down to the dot lane and we end up with a Z. Okay, and with this one here, with the purple one, again, we're going to go to the right. And this time we're going to go just to the left. And this is where we finish. There's no more dashes or dots. So we end up with an N. Okay, I'm going to give you, or you're going to tell me when you're going to be finished uh, with, the, uh, with the message. And then we're going to continue. I'm going to give you some time to look through. And I know it's a very complicated message.
just let me know when you're finished. How far is everybody? With a fourth line, you're getting there. You're getting there, super. <laughs> is our bed, so we're getting there. Yeah, um, that's strange. Awesome. And this is that three. Don't, don't give everything away. Don't give everything away. How about what you doing? Okay, get that. Fireflies, how far are you? If you finish, just shout out. Or you raise your hand or show me the thumbs up. Both will work.
Okay, I'm gonna give you 30 more seconds. And then we're gonna continue. All right. It's time to go. Dot. Dot. You've got yeah. everything. The, are you, the are you last okay? one. Yes. We're on the last. You're on the last one. Super. Awesome. And Fireflies is also on the last one. That's one last one. Okay. Super. Mm. Paper last one. Mm. Candies are there to not give to children. Ah, okay. Somebody already gave it away. Yes. Woo. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna keep we keep it to ourselves, the findings. The super detectives, we're gonna share the results in the end. Super. All right. Can I continue? Can I go on, guys? Yes. Sorry, we okay. had you on mute. Okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. All right. So, again, we have to make a table because now we're going to investigate the powder. And I'm going to show you just now how the powder looks like. So, so we have, uh, we're going to make uh, again a table with four columns. So on the left-hand side, uh, we're gonna write there down crime scene powder, so crime scene, and we know it's powder. And then suspect A is our bicarbonate. So suspect A, so we choose our bicarbonate. Suspect B is our starch. So this is what we collected from the suspects. Suspect C, he, are, he is using sugar. Suspect D, they have some salt. And suspect E has something that is called cream of tartar. Okay, so, and now in the first column, we're gonna write down our observations when we add two drops of water if it does something that is called dissolves. What does it mean? Dissolve means basically that your grains start to disappear, okay? Here, if you're gonna do this experiment, please make sure that you don't take too much of the um, of, uh, of any, any type of uh, bicarbonate or sugar or salt, um, because otherwise you, uh, you need lots of water to, to basically dissolve it, okay? In the second column, we're gonna add um, vinegar and we're gonna check if it's fizzing. And in the third one, we're gonna use diluted iodine. And I'm gonna show you how to dilute the iodine, diluted iodine and what it basically means. So what it basically means, dilution means that we're gonna put um, just one or two drops of iodine into water. And I'll show you how, just how, how it's gonna be done. And uh, we're looking for if it changes color. Okay, super. Right, I'm going to stop sharing. Whoopsie, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to change to my other camera again. Here we go. Okay, so this is how my table looks like. So I just made it my, made, made a nice table. So I can write down my observations. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start just um, with our bicarbonate, okay? And I'm just gonna, add, and, and all the other ones, and I'm just gonna add drops of water, okay? So I've prepared everything here. 
and sorry, here is our uh, the crime scene powder that I collected. So this is from the crime scene. Here we go. This is um, suspect A, which is the bicarbonate. Suspect B. Suspect C. Suspect D is the salt. And suspect E is the cream of tartar. Just remember that sometimes it is not really obvious um, what kind of powder we have. So we have to look for clues. Okay, so this is my water. Okay, and I'm using um, a little bit of a, of a pipette. Um, so how it works is you squeeze it, you put it in the liquid, you squeeze, no, sorry, you squeeze it beforehand, you're going to put it in the liquid, and then you release it. And then it will, what happens is it will suck up the water in here. And to release it, you just quickly, gently squeeze it. One, two. If you don't have uh, a pipette, you can also use a syringe. So again, you put the syringe into the water, you pull the lever up and the water will come in and then you just gently press down to release the water. If you have a straw, um, you're just going to take the straw, you're going to put it into the water and you close it with your finger on top. And then you're going to transfer it. And uh, as soon as you're over your, your, your powder, you're going to lift your finger off and the water will come out and you can practice beforehand. Okay, so let's start with our crime scene powder. So remember what I said with the first one, what we are just going to do is I'm just going to add and you can see I'm taking the back side of my of my of my of my spoon and I'm just going to add a few a few kind of um, uh, grains here okay and then we have suspect a with our bicarbonate and I'll just now what I'm going to do is I'm going to usually you ha would have to change in a proper lab you would have to change the spoon um, because otherwise you might get still grains from your, um, from your previous powder. So, but what you can do is you can just wipe it off. You can just clean it. Again, some bicarbonate. Okay, just a tiny little bit. You don't need much. And here we have some starch. Again, a little bit cleaning it off. Then we have suspect C with some sugar. Okay, so yeah, I hope you can see the grains here. Suspect D with some salt. Okay, and suspect E with some cream of tartar. Okay, so here we've got it. And now what we're going to do is, I'm gonna come a little bit closer. I hope that you can see it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some water onto it. And what I have here is a, is a toothpick. So I'm just kind of, Squeezing it around. And you can see that already your powder seem to disappear. Okay, so you can't really see it anymore. So this is um, the crime scene powder. Now I'm gonna do it with number A. Ooh, this one disappeared, okay? This one disappeared, that's most definitely. Okay, number B. Ah, uh, so you can still see the powder here. Okay, so not much change. So it does not dissolve. So B doesn't dissolve. Number C. Whoops. Yes, it's gone. Most certainly gone. Number D. Also most certainly gone. And number E pretty much looks like. So it doesn't, you know, you can't really see. So, so with, with C, you, 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 you kind of, it's, it, you don't, um, you're not quite sure if it's really gone or not. 
And also with E, you're not quite sure if it's really gone or not. Okay. So now we're going to fill this one into our table. All right. So what we can do is, for example, in our observation, um, dissolves bicarb. Um, so we can make it a cross and a tick because we are not quite sure. Um, but I would say it's more like a tick, well, maybe not. Uh, with a starch, uh, sorry, with a, a crime scene powder, sorry. And I'll just note it here, crime scene powder. It, it's a cross and a stitch. Bicarb definitely disappears. B, cornstarch does not disappear. C, definitely disappears. D, definitely disappears. Yes, plus minus. Yes. And E, again, it's a X and a, and a tick. Okay. All right. So this was the water. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add vinegar to our powder. Right, so I'm gonna have some vinegar in here. I'm gonna fill some vinegar in. Okay, and we're gonna do the same exercise again. And just to save some time, and well, oops, so there's our crime scene powder. Just to save some time, I'm actually now gonna place some here. And this time you can actually add a little bit more to it. Some here and some here. So that was my crime scene powder. Number A is our bicarbonate. And we're going to add some more, a little bit more. Here we go. I'm going to wipe it clean. And now we're going to have our starch here from suspect B. Two, whoops. There we go. Suspect C, the sugar. And we're going to add some more here. Suspect D, the salt. And you can already see that our powders, they don't really look all the same. So they actually look quite different, isn't it? And now we have suspect E. Here we go. All right. Super. Okay. So now I'm going to take, and I have to smell the vinegar. Yes, I've got the vinegar. So now what we're going to check is we're going to check if it's fizzing. So I'm going to add some drops on my crime scene powder and nothing happens. So let's see with suspect A. Oh, yo, 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 yo. I don't know if you can hear this, but it's definitely fizzing. Number B. Nope, nothing. Number C. Whoops, nothing. Number D. Also nothing. And E. Also nothing, apart from that, it's getting really murky. Okay. So, again, we can write down obs uh, our observations. So does it fizz? Uh, our crime scene powder does not fizz. Um, bicarb definitely fizzes. Yes. Um, B, our starch does not fizz and all the rest does not fizz. So we can make a cross. Okay, so coming now to our iodine. Right, as you can see, I'm not wearing gloves, so I'm probably gonna run around with yellow fingers just now. So what I've got in here is just a little bit of water. Okay, can you see it's not much? A little bit of water. And a 
I'm going to take some iodine and I'm just adding one, two, maybe three drops in it. Okay, so that just to give it a, a, a light color here. Can you see? It's just a, a tiny light color here. So just to, to uh, lighten up the color of the iodine. So this is what we call, we are basically making a solution. Okay, so I'm gonna use my syringe and let's just check out what's going to happen. So with our crime scene powder, I'm gonna add two drops and it doesn't really change color. So it's still this kind of yellowy color. And with A, also not much happening. It doesn't change color as well. Let's see what B does. Oopsie. Here we go. Now this is a, what I call a color. So here we've got a nice dark blue color. And I just have to rinse it. And we're going to go to C. Again, nothing. And, and this is just uh, when you, what you see here with the, with the blue color, that's just a, a little bit, I think, from, from uh, contamination. So from, from the previous one. Again, nothing. And just this yellowish color again. Okay, so not much happening except for the starch, which turns this nice purple color. Okay, so does it change color? No, not with our crime scene. Uh, with a bicarbonate, no. With a starch, yes. Um, it's purple. Sugar, no. Salt, no. Cream of tartar, no. Okay, so here we go. This is what we have here. And you already can make your prediction. You can already make your prediction and fill in your table here. Okay, so I'm gonna fill it in just now. Okay, coming to our last clue. Wow, we are coming to our last clue. Okay, let me just type this. So our last clue, evidence four, apple with bite marks. And before, um, uh, so you're gonna go compare it and I can show you how you can actually uh, take your own bite marks. So just check out whose bite marks we actually found on the apple. And you tell me when you're ready. 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 Super. Okay. Let me just then sh stop sharing my screen. And we're going to just change to integrated webcam. Okay, all right. Now, how can we take our own bite marks and how you, can you figure out, you know, who ate your favorite uh, chocolate candy or, or something like this? So you can use a styrofoam cup like this and you can cut a piece off like this. And then you can just gently Ah, bite into it gently. I uh, don't press too hard because well, what I show you gonna I was gonna show you what's gonna happen if you press too hard. Then you can't really see. You can't really see your bite marks. So just press gently onto it. And then what you can do now is cut it off. So you can write. So this is the top one. This is the bottom one. And to make it more visible, you can actually take a pencil and you can kind of rub over it. And now what you're gonna see are my bite marks here. 
So this is how my bite marks look like on the top. And, oops, from the bottom, I hope you can see this. Okay, if you don't have styrofoam, I actually prefer this method here, where you're gonna have a piece of chocolate. Oh, and no, that was a bit too much. Okay, you just gently press your teeth into the piece of chocolate or into the slab of chocolate, just like we've done with the styrofoam. Mm. I just used it as an excuse to eat some chocolate. Okay, are we ready? Have you come to a conclusion? Who's gonna be, who is going to be your prime suspect? You wanna share it? You can, you can put it in the chat. So who do you think is your prime suspect? Who's done it? Based on the evidence. Yeah, what's your answer? You can type it into the chat. You can type, type it into the chat. That's fantastic. Oops, you can type it into the chat. You can type it into the chat. Ooh, uh, we have a suspect. Fireflies, do you also have a suspect? So Devin thinks it's E. Ooh, we'll see. Okay, so E seems to be the prime suspect. Okay. And we're gonna, I'm gonna share it again with you guys. And let's see if they are right. Okay, so remember those ones are our suspects and we looked at all the evidence and now let's find out who took the candy out of the principal's office. Okay, ready. The fibers. Fiber one matched in fact. Suspect is fiber one, uh, the fiber. So the fiber that was on the seat. Hmm. Okay. Fiber two. Match the one from Professor Zweistein. So that he was definitely there as well because he left some fiber at the crime scene. Fiber three, yes, it of course the victim must be there as well. And always, you know, a victim can always also leave traces behind because he's already in the, in the office. Okay, so Mr. Stratt Sherry definitely was there, can be linked to the, uh, connected to the crime scene. Uh, suspect C and suspect E can also be linked to the crime scene. So now let's have a look at the secret message. And the secret message actually read, candies are bad. Do not give them to children. I'm pretty sure everybody agrees on that, isn't it? Okay, candies are bad. So what does it actually mean? What does this message tell us? There are in fact only two people who in our, remember in our, our little write up, uh, two people who kind of, um, said that candies are not very good for you. One was Mrs. Rainy Day, because she said she's allergic to candy and believes that children should not eat candies because they are unhealthy. So basically, candies are bad. And then we have Mr. Speedy, uh, and he believes that candies are bad for the health of children. Okay. All right. So two suspects that we can link to it. So suspect D and suspect E. Right, our white powder. Okay, so with the two drops of water, um, the crime scene powder I've, I've put in here, um, uh, it dissolves, but I think we can also say uh, we weren't quite sure, which actually links to us as well to suspect E. Okay, so suspect E was definitely because it turned purple, which the other ones didn't do. Okay, so um, we could link uh, suspect C, suspect D, and also actually suspect A to it, and suspect E. So the white powder was not really 
helping very much. It ex could ex exclude definitely a suspect B as, as, a, as a culprit. And then of course, the most precious evidence, the apple with a bite mark, which we can absolutely link to suspect E. All right, so based on the evidence collected, you already got the conclusion right. It was Mr. Speedy who was the culprit. Okay, so well done everybody for for uh, uh, for basically deducing or finding the right suspect. Why do you think? Why do you think did he took the candy? Uh, did he take the candies? Does anybody want to answer? Yeah, they can talk. Talk here. So why do you think? Yes. Because candy are not healthy for children. Candies are not healthy for children. I think he has had a very nice motive for it because he wanted to uh, protect candies, uh, the, the children from, you know, getting, you know, not so nice teeth, getting big like me, you know, I love candies. So, um, and I think he has had a very nice motive. Okay, so mm, I think if he would have talked to the to the principal, I think it would have been better that instead he took the candies. So we'll see what's going to end up with. Okay, guys, our time is up. I hope you enjoyed our little excursion. Um, don't forget tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to make a draw bot. Okay, so you need uh, pencils, you need a motor. Even if you don't have these items, um, and if you, sorry, if you if you if you uh, go to the website, you find the whole list. Um, even if you don't have these items, you can always uh, watch and see how it's been done. Thank you so much for coming and enjoy the Good. rest of your public holiday. Goodbye, Thank you so everybody. Much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye. 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 Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Takozo, for.